Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. We have a Dr. Paul Akita Murray. He has shown me a part of the man. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much, 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 sir. Please just give a round of applause, please. Mr. and Mrs. Gabriel, I did today, I did the whole, the whole of this list. Mr. and Mrs. Ranti Oshikomura, the whole of this list. Mr. Tupe Owadi Ndola, former chairman of the local government, the whole of this list. Of those things, judiciary. Barrister Cosmos, member of those things, financial crime commission, director of NSA, engineer Alke. You are welcome, guys. Let me just say, last week I always made a proper view. All the name that appears in this week today. So I don't know how to pronounce it, but please pardon me. So that my case should not be like that of a pastor in a village church. The man who just really forgot his appeal of glasses at all. And there was no keyboard, no organ. And the man that even remembers uh, of the congregation in tune. Da, 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 da.
have taken a very, very strong and solid root in the developed world. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the idea of business ethics is a recent development in Africa. In the whole of West Africa sub region, for instance, Professor Elekido of Pan African University, Lekki, and my humble self belong to the first generation of researchers with protocols on business ethics. In the world of Robert Solomon, the world today is different from 50 years ago, and we are learning to use ethics to deal with emerging situations. The growth of business philosophies in, in recent time is also an important factor for renewed interest in business ethics. Available philosophies include ethical positivism, virtue theory, utilitarianism, Machiavellianism, consequentialism, social contract theory, ethical relativism, and so on and so forth. But the truth is that business ethics can be defined as the search for the right way for conducting business. It also includes the question of what value are being pursued by business. Mr. President, in this part of the world, business has continued to behave with no sense of moral decorum. The height under profit maximization to perpetrate grandstanding moralities. They engage in all forms of immoral activities, such as product manipulation, payment of price to get contracts, workers exploitation, overbilling of customers, exploiting tax loopholes, dumping toxins into the hairs and water, and outside lack of compliance with standards within the industry. In Nigeria, for example, there are no codes to regulate business operations. The gate is strong open to everyone, everything can carry, without restrictions. To be a businessman in Nigeria is a mere fraud. All available business associations, such as MAN, which is Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, Nasima, they have failed business in this regard. But I want to say very clear that researchers have confirmed consistently that when business operates ethically, there is a full assurance of sustainable success. For instance, 100, uh, there have been 100 business, successful businesses in the world that have operated above 100 years, paraded consistent ethical value, which they held tenaciously and they never compromise in, in terms of operational quality, service delivery, company branding, and these values remain at their hallmark over time. And they are able to leverage their strong character positive brands and value activities in order to navigate, make profits, grow and sustain their existence over time. In this lecture, my focus is going to dissect the following. One, I will look at the meaning of ethics very briefly. Ethics also as the centerpiece of humanity development. The emerging field of applied ethics across business, medicine, technology, in the sciences, politics and religion. Then we also look at the challenge of business ethical practices in Nigeria. And I will round up by telling us how you can leverage business ethics in order to enhance your profitability, prosperity and sustainability. I don't want to waste my time on the academic journey. My vice chancellor has been able to talk about how I went to school, how I became a professor, and what I'm doing. So I won't waste time, let me go to the meaning of ethics. Ethics is not easy to define, but I will make some efforts. Most of the popular one includes the one by Omori in 1993, Zumba in 2004, and Adeyemi in 2000. 21. 
the board defined ethics as a discipline that concerns itself with the question of what is right and what is wrong. It deals with how we ought to behave in a particular situation. Of course, we can also look at ethics as the science of virtues and vices. It is a reflective study on the right way to behave in a particular situation. Of course, there are many approaches to ethical analysis. Some of the influential theories include hedonism, universalism, egoism, existentialism, phenomenology, voluntarism, deontology, and so on and so forth. But the important thing is that ethics, as it were, is very, very important. It has become the centerpiece for humanity development. Well, let me just give a clear analysis. Imagine everyone living life in a society would be hellish, indecent, a woman, very crude, insensitive, impolite, licentious, callous, and brutal. Of course, the life of, a, of an immoral man would be empty. And that's why those of us in ethics would see an immoral person as a sick person. Because you do your own thing your own way, you don't care about other. And then, at the other, at the other side of the coin, a society that is made up of moral men will, will witness the fruit of moral life, such as love, compassion, justice, fairness, equity, and such a society will be agreeable, civilized, functional comfortable, habitable, and the society will rapidly witness the fruits that will sustain not only other sanity, development and growth, but sustainability. And that is why development, the developed society has been able to recognize this fact long ago. Unfortunately, Africa is completely the opposite of what I've just said. And I'll try to explain the reason as time goes on. I will say that let's now quickly look at what is business ethics. Business ethics is an important branch of applied ethics. It deals with ethical analysis of business practices. And let me talk about some of the questions that business ethics ask. For example, what is the right or wrong objective of the business? What are the, what, what are the rules that govern internal organizations of, of the business? What is the moral obligation of business to the environment? What, what, what are the issue of corporate governance? Issue of selling of agricultural products? Morality of deceptive packages? And so on and so forth. In fact, it includes child labor practices, ethics of business accounting policies. Then, even in the bank, there is a provision of for buy and thou food will go a long way to determine the time, the interpretation, and the meaning an organization will portray in terms of business ethics. Let me now go to the challenge of business ethical practices in Nigeria. In my work, I was able to identify five levels of ethical development in Nigeria and in Africa. We have the Nigerian uh, Unitarian Society, Nigeria the colonial era, formative years, and the contemporary era. Business ethics. In the Nigerian traditional area, we are predicated on all traditional African brotherhoods. Life was very admirable. There was moral decency, in which everyone was truly his or her brother's keeper. In fact, there was sound ethical morality. I'll give you just one simple example. And it's a story. A commodity seller then will merely display his item, this sign, 
where I had to buy and go there, pick the item, and put the exact amount, which is calories, beside the remaining products. Intentionally, there will be no cheating, no underpayments, no overpayments, and people will not be scammed. I'm sure you can see the difference. The question there was about integrity. Integrity was the worst word. The, the, the period can be defined as the golden era of ethical practices. However, from colonial era down to this era, particularly with the era of advanced free fall of, of the year 1980, the business ethical configuration became one of the one of despicable detestation. For instance, Corruption Perception Index is a, is a, I mean, is, 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 is a model by the University of Göttingen. You know, they, they do what is called Corruption Perception Index on Nigeria, and they rated Nigeria as one of the most corrupt countries in the world to do business with. The World Bank and the IMF at one time or the other threatened to deny Nigeria further assistance on account of swallowing political and corruption profile. In, 20, in, in the year 2000, a survey of average Nigerian businessmen indicated that corruption and political practices have con consistently become accepted norm. People no longer see political practices and, and, and corruption as evil. Well, can we just quickly look at some of the effects of this? One, I want to put it to you, if we continue like that, there are so many things that will happen. The first one is that the, the lifespan of an average business, man, uh, average business in Nigeria is now, is now 30. Large business in Nigeria, the, the lifespan is 30. While medium scale is 15, while small scale is only 5, on account of unethical practices. Aside from that, um, the cost of everything will be high. Why? Because, because of the political environment, people will now put the cost of political practices into their production cost, uh, cost thereby increasing the total production cost. I hope an accountant will understand what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say. But unfortunately, um, People try to justify that by saying that it's our environment. Our, our environment is, is like that. There's nothing you can do because corruption has become you know, a norm. But then, as you go along, I have a case study of even when you choose to be different, the I mean the, 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 the I mean the advantage you can be very very um, interesting. So intentionally. I think it is important, let me now give, at this particular junction, I would like to give a step-by-step -step procedure which we need to leverage on so that um, when we leverage on it, our business can truly prosper. The first thing we need to do is to first of all have a conviction that as a businessman you are going to operate an ethical business. Very, very important. Then the second stage is to look for and imbibe yourself with the knowledge of ethical practices. Knowledge, they say, is power. You don't understand what it means. You know, to understand the ethical principles, you may not be able to practice it. Then the third stage is for businesses to institute core leadership that is founded on strong ethical practices. This implies fostering and resonating culture of ethical leadership through the business organization. There is need for ethical training. There must also integrate ethical sustainable practices by pursuing environmental sustainable practices, ensuring responsible supply chain, selecting supply that adhere to ethical standards and socially responsible practices, with zero tolerance for child labor practices, human rights abuse, commitment to well-being of your worker, fair treatment through, and through fair compensation, provision of safe and secure environment, 
adequate staff training, maintaining work balance for your staff, developing a kind of ethical marketing, and make sure you are all deceptive advertising and false claim. All these are those things that you need to incorporate at that, at that stage. Then the fourth step for every business is to sit down and make sure you look at your business and identify critical ethical gray areas. For every business, there are ethical gray areas. For example, every business does not have the same experience, so you must look at the peculiarity of your own business and see what are those things. Is it interplay with the customer? Is it at the point of buying your raw materials? Is it at the, at the, at the point of you know, producing where you, are, you have the, the liberty to change your customer and so on and so forth? So the fifth stage is the stage of business ethical auditing. At this stage, management must embark on audits of the entire organizational structure based on adequate knowledge of ethical gray area. And number six stage is the stage at which you come up and develop an action plan for implementation. For every identified ethical gray area, you must develop an ethical intervention mechanism to address so that those problems can be solved without any loophole. In concluding this particular aspect, I would like to state loud and clear that ethics and morality are ultimate success factor for an enterprise. For business to truly prosper, for business to grow sustainably, there is need for holistic approach to for profitability by ensuring that business remains viable and successful on the long run based on ethical templates that positively impact society, consumers, workers, and the community. I would like to use Bobas Petroleum Company as a case study to underscore the centrality and the import of this particular message. Bobas Petroleum started as a small retail petroleum company in the Bado by fronting for independent marketers like Tesaco and MRS. Why doing this? The company developed from the onset ethical templates that sees business as a ministry, a ministry to do good, to maintain trust, to avoid all manners of exploitation, contribute to society, observe friendly environmental action plan, implement complex welfare packages for worker. In the course of doing this, Bobas suffers various litigation from competitors because they accuse, they accuse that particular company of spoiling business for them. In actual fact, the, the, the company was reported to traditional rulers and all manners of power that be. But the company refused to be dissociated from a core ethical principle. Today, the company has become a brand name Foremost family business with huge goodwill from stakeholders such as the public, the consumer, government, and the entire society. Bobas has continued to grow by leaps and bounds into multi billion dollar business. Investors from overseas and from within are pleading to do business with Bobas because of her strong integrity profile. Currently, the company has 145 petrol stations and they also have substantial investment and interest in Tan Farm, making the company one of the leaders in that industry. To those petroleum marketing competitors that are bovers, I mean that are threatening bovers with no ethical consideration, always hustling to cut corners changing prices of products at will, especially those that delight in, in consumer ripoff, product adulteration, including based on consumer. I want to ask our markets, with low integrity capital, you are 